So welcome back everyone. As you can see, we're not at the usual setting. We're actually sitting in the living room um, right now. So yeah, and we're looking at two maps, um, more spe specifically two maps of Belgium and Northern France. Um, they're basically the same maps. I just drew some differences on them, but yeah, um, this is gonna be 100k and 200. So in this video, um, I wanna clear some things up. Um, you hear me talk a lot about wind and how it influences uh, pigeon races. And I think some of you guys don't understand fully how uh, much wind is a factor and how it exactly works. So yeah. I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time, but I've been putting it off uh, quite uh, some time now. So yeah, I'm going to do it now. Um, so yeah, let's dive into it. Uh, as you can see, we got the map right here. Um, uh, I did draw a line how uh, from this is basically our, our lofts um, right between those two dots. And then this is the release site for the 100k race, which is Kivran, which is basically uh, right on the border of France and Belgium. Uh, and then, yeah, I did uh, draw a little compass on there so you can see um, what um, directions we're talking. But uh, yeah. So I wanted to explain uh, the kind of winds we have been getting this year. Um, I'll draw it on the compass right here. I've been in this direction. So southwest, it's what uh, it would be called. So um, how it would influence um, the pigeon's trajectory, uh, as it's called. Um, so basically the pigeons are flying southwest as well, just a little bit less. Uh, so the wind would um, kind of be on their tail like that, kind of on the wing to the side. Um, so that would change uh, the pigeons trajectory. Well, obviously they're not going to fly uh, straight away, uh, straight with the wind or, or they will never uh, basically reach home. So that's this would be uh, the direction if they didn't fight against wind, as it's called. But yeah, the actual trajectory of the pigeons is going to be more like this. Uh, so I got to be kind of careful. So yeah, uh, obviously I'm kind of exaggerating uh, right now. But that would be the general uh, kind of rule. Um, as far as that type of wind goes. Um, and same would be uh, said for, for instance, if you have northern wind, straight on northern wind. Uh, I'll draw it on the little compass. It would also uh, push the pigeons in exactly the same direction, maybe a little bit less so. Um, or even a little bit more to the side. Um, it basically has similar effects uh, like that wind, just because the actual trajectory of the pigeons uh, isn't in line with, you know, isn't straight in line with any of these directions. So, for example, it would kind of push them even further to that side. Uh, obviously, in real life, it's not going to be as... Uh, much as I'm drawing it right now, uh, it's more going to be somewhat like this, but it's it's easier to see for you guys if I exaggerate. Um, so yeah, and then we have um, another type of wind. Uh, for example, let's add some east eastern, uh, just pure eastern wind is kind of unusual, but may, sometimes it's northeast, which um, uh, is quite often the case, but in case of pure east wind, it would be totally the other direction. They would be kind of like this, you know, they would enter 
um, they would fly like this. So that's the basic rule um, in terms of wind. Um, and so now I'm gonna focus a little bit more on our, the arrival side right here. So we're gonna zoom in on that, which I have another map map for. So yeah, this is gonna be the little zoomed in section that I just drew right there. Um, I don't know if you guys are any good with maps. Uh, it might be a little complicated, but you know, let's go over the same uh, wind. You know, I did draw a new, another one uh, on there. So let's start with um, southwest wind again. Let's draw it on here. So that's the basic same line as that blue line right there. So you're basically entering um, where it, they should be entering somewhere around here. Um, so yeah, and I'll give a little example right there is, um, a guy's loft that we know very well. Um, and he benefits a lot from that type of wind. And uh, let's also draw Paul Sturgis loft, which would be somewhere in here. That would be Paul Sturgis loft. Let's call it PS and I don't know. Let's call that X and that is our loft. And that's actually where I live. And that this, that's where our lofts are um, at my grandmother's house. But uh, yeah, uh, let's say uh, we have Southwest wind, like I just drew right here. So the pigeons are gonna arrive uh, first to uh, Paul Sturgis loft, which would be right here. Uh, so obviously he would get the pigeons first, uh, which isn't, um, it's also a shorter distance for the pigeons to travel to his loft than it is to ours. Uh, but then we have, which is quite logical, but then we have um, this loft right here, which I should have drawn the arrow kind of somewhere in here. Um, but yeah, uh, the pigeons, um, will actually come uh, over his loft first, as you can tell by how the arrow is pointing. And then they would have to make a, a back track to our loft, which you'll see, you see a lot of in the, in the videos that they come over that little forest area, uh, not a big forest in the back, they should come over the big forest in the back, but they don't, they come over the little, um, for a little wooded trees area to the side, to the left of the loft, which is, which I'm drawing right now. Um, so yeah. Um, so they have been first over his loft and then they have to turn back to reach our loft, which is, if any of you know, uh, the actual blue line here is how the distance get measured, you know? the fastest way, the way that as, as the bird flies, this is how it get measured. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, if you calculate this distance, uh, his loft is further from the release point than ours. So they have a little bit more time to reach uh, his loft for them to fly the same speed. But in this case, uh, this is not the case because the wind pushes them over his loft first, which is further away. Um, if you if you don't have any wind, if they travel straight on, but they don't, so they curve around here. So yeah, our pigeons actually have to turn back and do even more uh, meters than this guy's pigeons, even though our loft is closer to the release point. So yeah, they're actually, working against the distance and against uh, the wind. I don't know if you guys understand that, but I'm trying to explain it as clearly as I can. Um, so yeah, I did draw Northern Wind on here as well, but that's basically the same effect. Um, so we're not gonna do that. 
we're gonna draw the eastern wind as well on here which i'm gonna use blue for eastern wind would be uh, ideal for us um, northern eastern as well but yeah eastern would be whenever there's eastern involved we play tend to play uh, pretty well so with eastern it's gonna be um, right the other way around so we're gonna be coming over basically like this oh well or like this you know they, they don't they kind of separate it of course so some pigeons are also gonna fly here and here so yeah you know but the general direction uh, is gonna be like i explained um so yeah when it's northeastern wind um we, then we have uh, a lot of um a lot better arrivals because you know they come over our loft first and then have to go to his so yeah when it's eastern wind uh, paul has a lot of negative effects from it um, because his loft is <clears throat> is basically the same distance as ours from the release point it might be a little bit closer but it's basically the same even though when it's eastern wind his the pigeons go come over our loft first and then have to go to that so to his loft so yeah um what you'll see is um this is actually halar i don't know if you guys know it that's where it lives um but yeah um what else do i need to explain oh yeah so i basically explained the general rule of wind and how it influences uh, the pigeon's trajectory um now you could use uh, that to your advantage um, by quite a significant margin uh, for example um, we can also basket pigeons in bevel which is this little town um, they will have pigeons from this town obviously uh, town themselves and then you know somewhere in here the general rule is that they have pigeons from that section and then our federation is basically this circle so but yeah we can also basket pigeons in bevel meaning if it's the first type of wind southwest um, they'll fly like this and they'll come over our lofts first and then they have to travel to there uh, which is a, a little bit more, um, you know, I'm kind of exaggerating, but this line is kind of like the straight uh, from the release side. Obviously, it's going to be a lot more to this side, but I can't draw it that way. Um, but yeah, that's a, a way to use the, the wind in your advantage is to basket pigeons in here. So you race against those guys. Uh, in that federation um, which the which uh, you are situ situated a lot better for uh, as you can see the pigeons would also arrive over that and then go up up to there um, what you don't want to do it's is um, you don't want to uh, basket pigeons here when uh, there's eastern wind obviously because you'll be at a very big disadvantage so they'll arrive, you know, like this basically, but up higher and then have to, it you, it would place you in a big, big disadvantage. So, so that's how uh, many of you guys, many of you guys may know um, Ramon Keulmans, who lives basically right there, basically next to us. He tends to use that uh, um, strategic maneuver quite a lot. Um, when it's Eastern wind, he also, yeah, he uh, baskets in ETM, which is our town, and then when it's uh, southern wind, he he'll go and up to basket in Babel, which is, you know, he he's got he's got it all figured out the little tricks. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm basically trying to say, uh, trying to teach you guys here. Um, keep in mind, uh, we this is also a club of pigeons right here. Um, but we actually cannot um, basket pigeons here because 
it's it's like a rule um some you know it's another federation um they don't want to race against us because we would be um better situated for the win and stuff like that so but yeah uh, Bevel does allow it etm does allow it and then we also have one down here somewhere which we did a race the last few races in last three or something uh you'll see it on the results it's a different uh federation but they also allow it so we have been racing here which um uh, benefits our southern wind as well <coughs> sorry um but yeah that's basically how to use wind to your advantage and now i also have basically the same uh, kind of um the same maps they're basically the same maps for the 200k race which um yeah i also wanted to add how the much uh the shorter the race is the bigger the influence of the wind is and do not take that lightly is by a really really significant margin that uh, the wind influences um the shorter races so yeah we do tend to prefer the 200k race just because it's a it's a lot easier um uh, for the wind to influence it less but you know the same goes as i draw draw on, draw on right there just a little bit less so so yeah as you can see it's a little less of a curve that's gonna be uh, southwest wind again Oh yeah, and I did draw the, this is a 100k, uh, 100k release site, uh, Kivra, and then this is Neon, or Wyon, whatever you want to use. Um, it's actually situated a little bit more south, this is situated a little, a little bit more west. So the wind is going to act a little different, but not much. Um, you know, and obviously the distance uh, kind of, you know, it's double distance. It's actually a little bit over double distance, um, I think. But yeah, generally speaking, we say that this is 100k and this is 200. But yeah, um, basically uh, another one for Eastern Wind. If it's the same Eastern Wind, it's gonna push, like on this one, it's gonna push him a little bit more. So like that. Um, which zooming in on this this little square again, I got it here again. Is basically, you know, the same ordeal. Um, Eastern wind again. They'll be arriving, kind of like this. You know, whenever it's eastern wind, it's is gonna be ideal for us. I do like to have a little bit of northern wind on there as well, just because our pigeons tend to like um, flying with headwind uh, more than tailwind so yeah um, they don't like southeast either they prefer they prefer north northeast northeast with a little bit uh, cloudy weather is usually the best for our pigeons um, so yeah uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do the entire thing again for 200k uh, because it's basically very similar. So yeah, um, this is gonna be the wind video, you guys. Um, you can pause it and watch it again. I think I explained all of it to the best of my knowledge. But yeah, if you have any more questions, feel free to ask. I might do an update video on here on this topic um someday in the near future but you know i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned a little bit um, about using wind and how it influences pigeons i truly think is the bigger the biggest factor uh, especially in the 100k races uh, to be successful so yeah um if you enjoyed enjoyed today's video uh, feel free to leave a like comment subscribe and as always, have a good day.